It's been over a year since I made a how-to guide or a walkthrough of how I make my Let's Play videos. Obviously things have changed. I don't use a JVC camcorder to record my TV screen anymore. And then I switched that over to a Sony HDR CX-110 camcorder. And yeah, the quality was still great, but the audio wasn't as great. And then there was always that autofocus issue during games like Resident Evil 4 or it focused back and forth too much. So with this video, basically it's just an updated version of how I make my Let's Play videos today. I had a guy named Paul ask me and brought to my attention that, you know, I should maybe update my walkthrough and how I do it, the how-to guide. So basically the first thing that I do first when I make my Let's Play videos is I pick a console game. Now I take the game, I put it into the Wii. So if I'm recording from my Wii in my bedroom, then I can record easily just take that thing to my Mac. Now, the, the kind of capture card I have is something that is a Roxio Game Capture Card Pro HD, and this is what it looks like. It has component cables coming from one end and component cables coming out the other end. As you can see, the component cables going into the bottom portion of it is the one that connects to the console. So if you're using the component cables, whether it's for the Wii, so you can record GameCube games or Wii games, or if it's for a PlayStation 3, that's where the cords will go. The one on the top is the one that's going to connect into the TV. So you want to make sure you have some sort of high definition TV. A very standard TV is not going to work with the component cables, or at least not with the capture card I have. So if you only want to record in 480p, then you want to get the standard Roxio game capture card. Whereas the Pro HD is only with like five comp the five component cables attached, or the HDMI cable if you're recording with an Xbox 360. But I'm only using the Game Capture Pro HD for my Wii, which only goes to 480p, obviously, and then my PS3, which does go to 1080i. So that's pretty nice. But I always put them both on 720 for video settings. But we'll we'll get into that in a bit. So basically, after you put the game in, which I'm going to do a test with Super Mario Sunshine, and then you put the, make sure everything's connected to the Roxio Game Capture Pro HD. You also want to make sure it's connected to your computer. Now, the thing is where my settings get a little confusing and difficult is because a Roxio Game Capture Pro HD does not work on a Mac. Not in the slightest. So I had to get a parallel desktop to run on my, my iMac. And then I had to get a Windows 7 operating system to run alongside my Mac operating system because a Roxio does not work on a Mac operating system, which you'll notice with a lot of different programs as well, whether it's an Empire's game or some video editors don't work on it, as well as a lot of other stuff. So the parallel desktop will definitely help if you're having that sort of issue. There was no guides on the internet on how to do it, so I had to figure it out myself for the most part, but it is possible to get that Roxio working on to your Mac and whatnot. Okay guys, here's basically my recording setup. I have my game loaded on my TV, my controller, the Roxio Game Capture Pro HD on the ground, and then I have my Samsung COU1 mic, which is what I use to record my audio. I don't use any sort of, uh, I don't use my camcorder for that or anything. Also, um, I have the Roxio Game Capture Pro HD, so let's go ahead and go to the computer. So I have this loaded up right here. I'm going to go in and click Capture. This is what's also going to be recording my audio. So as I click Capture, it's going to show up the Roxio Game Capture Pro HD, which I have. It does take a while to load because it is on a Mac. And the parallels I, the, the most RAM I have on the parallels is three, 3 gigabytes, basically. I always turn off this audio here, so I mute the preview audio. That way the audio does not get inside my mic, which is also going to be really helpful. So make sure it doesn't get in that. Make sure the TV that we're looking at is like on 12, 10, some low type of audio. That way you're not seeing it. So as you see on the TV screen, I finally have here on my Roxio game capture. That's what's going to implement my game footage. Now all I'm going to do basically is we're just going to do like a two minute test video here. There's no other format I can get it in. M2S, make sure it's on in the input component. You can choose where it goes and how much memory you'll have left. That's the memory for my parallels, not the iMac itself because it's a lot more than that. It'll prefix the title, but you can change it if you want. And then we just go ahead and click capture. And once we hit 
click capture, this is what's going to record my game footage. Now for audio, I just use Audacity, but since I'm using Camtasia to record the screen, that's basically not going to happen. But basically, you'd pull up Audacity and you'd ask it to record my game audio at the same time. And I'd choose which mic I want to use it on, but since I'm not having the COU for that at the moment, that's not going to happen. So that's how I record my uh, gameplay audio. So let's go ahead and play around a little bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and do something. Just goof off for a little bit. Just like a minute or two. It could be anything. So while that is recording my gameplay footage, the Audacity will be recording my gameplay audio. I mean, not the gameplay audio, but my commentary for it. So here's Mario Sunshine. There's a lot of stuff to do. I haven't played this game in years, so I figured let's do a test video on it. Let's go and goof off a little bit. I mean, there's of course there's a lot of sunshines I don't have yet. I don't have like 100% like Shadow Kirby 707 or anything, but or other people like Chuck Conroy or whatever. But it's just fun to. I don't know. As a kid, I just played this game for fun. I mean. I love going around and jumping on stuff, and it's like one of those fun summer games that everyone wants to play. And I like how uh, Del Isle Delfino actually made it into Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Hopefully they'll keep that arena for the next one. I mean, that would be pretty cool if they kept that one in my opinion. Oh, I got hurt. Eh, whatever. We're just basically goofing off. There's not really much more to do here. Make sure the frame rate's okay, all the settings are working. Alright, I think that's enough to toy with. So, that's basically how I record the gameplay footage. We're going to move over to the, the computer screen, and then I'm going to show you guys how I record, well, how I edit the gameplay well with the audio that I record separately. So let's go ahead and go over and do that. Alrighty, after recording the gameplay audio as well as, I mean the gameplay video audio as well as the commentary audio through Audacity, now is the time to go through edit and share. The reason why I go through this, it's either this or I use some sort of video converter, but that's not how I do it. Other people can. I used to, but the quality wasn't coming out as great. So since it goes to an N2, well NT2S file, which really sucks, I decided to go through their own video editor. So I just go to add photo and video. This is only just a small extra step. So I'm going to go ahead and take that Super Mario footage I got. I'm going to go and open oh, Super Mario Sunshine. Open that up. Of course, it always takes a little while to load. Patience is a virtue. Yeah, yeah. So this is my whole gameplay. And you can see where I have my pauses, the odd everything's going and everything looks pretty okay so far yeah it looks pretty good to me so let's go ahead and stop everything there put it back to the beginning now I want to go to output export as always set no because I'll save the video file changes if you have any you can name it anything else where it goes same as original and all you're gonna do is click create video file and so that's obviously going to take some time. You're going to create that video file and put it together at something, but I already have other video clips I'm going to be showing you with an actual Let's Play video I made. This was just how I record with it. So once you have export that, whatever you name it as, it's going to turn into something that's on M2TS file, which is what my video editor does not read. Maybe yours will, but mine does not. So I have to compensate for something else. <laughs> that sounded weird. Okay, so... Basically, it's in my alternate desktop, production 4, production 5. That's basically, it goes into an MP4 video is what my Vegas does recognize. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up my video editor, Sony Vegas Movie Studio. Let's see, 21. So this is going to be Let's Play Resident Evil 4 number 22. With the same amount of cursing as I always do, obviously. So let's go ahead and open this up, production 5. And then I'm going to go ahead and open my audio as well which is in my other desktop RE45 that's the audio I recorded with Audacity once I have everything up here all I go to is properties I always want to make sure I have it on the HD 1080 24p setting but it goes on 23.976 frames per second I want to make sure I put that on 29.9 frames per second make sure it's the best uh, resolution quality I can get it in 
I always want to make sure I do that. I want to adjust this real quick. All right, now going back over here, all I do is I click that, I drag it over to my video line. Now, see how the video does not cover everything? There's black bars on all four sides. All I do is I right click the video, I go to video pan and crop. Now make sure these two parts are on. This is the size from the center, and this is the lock aspect ratio. By doing that, all four sides are gonna be moving at the same at the same time. So as I do that, I wanna cut off those bars. There we go. Click X. And now I can view my video wherever it may be as I go through. Try to get that guy. So you can see everything's running pretty well at this point, but there's no commentary audio added to that yet. The Roxio Game Capture Pro HD does not record commentary, obviously, so you have to go and add that separately. That's where this comes in. Now if you'll notice, just by clicking and dragging it, see how there's a little gap at the end? This is not synced with the actual game to where I was talking. So usually before I start recording, I make sure I record one second out. So I split this up, I delete that clip, and then I'll drag it over to where I about think it's right. About a, a second after I see the Roxio Game Capture card recording, right when it gets to one second, I start my commentary and the gameplay. So that's where I'm going to be taking a guess. Click drag that over, drag them both over accordingly. And then now this is where we can hit play and see Welcome where it's going. Let's play Resident Evil 4. Ah, oh, fuck this part. Oh. How do you stop you, you motherfucker? So, basically, as you can tell where I link things up, I like to go a little further in the video, seeing where I shoot something, or I can line up my audio. Oh! Yeah! So that's not too bad so far. It looks about right. And since you record this yourself, you'll be able to know when you say something at certain parts. So... Let's go, let, let's see if I talk about the sniper with these guys. Shoot the catapult users. Once you do, this makes your life a whole lot easier. There should be one more. And you're going to want to shoot all these guys. Oh, damn, that was close. See how I said, oh, damn, that was close when that fireball hit that part up here, like where that ledge was? That's how I know I'm pretty close, but that's a double check. Now I'm going to triple check it somewhere else throughout the game. Somewhere I know I was at, don't worry, if you're watching my let's play of this, I'm not going to spoil anything. So let's go ahead and make sure I get to a certain part. No, no, uh, that's too far. Let's go and go back a little bit. About right over here. What the fuck? You're not supposed to come out yet. Oh! Or I said, ah, oh, when I got hit. Now I definitely know for a third chance that this is completely synced. So I like to go to the end, I like to zoom in. Now all I do is I click that. Have a good day. Well after I say have a good day, I click and drag them both over to that bar. That will delete the ends of it. And now I have my Let's Play Resident Evil 4 video. All I do is I go to Make Movie, I save it to my hard drive, and after doing that, it's going to give me the option of what kind of settings I want. I always put it in the Windows Media video format with 6 megapixels, whatever that means, HD 720 to 30p video. I think this means megapixels, but I, I know where most of this stuff means. I'm still taking video classes and stuff and uh, TMCC, so I'm still learning. I'll name my video. Let's play... Resident Evil 4, what's this, number 22, 23? Nah, it's one or the other. I'm going to think it's 23. Now I'm going to put Tower Trouble for my title. And then I click Render. And now it's going to go ahead and render that. And it's going to take about an hour or two for that to finish rendering. And that itself does take a while, sadly. I mean, if it did go faster, it, that would be really amazing. But it does not go by any faster, sadly. So it's just patience, pretty much. But in the meantime, we can minimize this and we can do something else on a computer as well, if you're just using a Windows. For me, I'm using a Mac, so I can go do something else while I take care of this. 
So basically, the, the way I make my video icons, I can show you, is through Photoshop. And that's through Photoshop basic uh, Photoshop skills. And after a year, when I'm done being a membership, I'm not going to be a member anymore. So I'm not going to be making these anymore. But you go through Photoshop and you can make your little icons. I always like to make a few ahead. That way I'm not trying to rush out the door trying to make these and possibly being late for work. So let's see. Okay, so that last video was 22, not 23. But, you know, you can't rename it now. I'll rename it later. But so you make the icons for it if you're a partner. If not, don't bother getting partnership. It's not something you want to go for at this point. So that's how I record my console games as well as recording it, editing it through Sony Vegas, and then rendering it as well. And that's going to take a while. Now how I record and make my emulator videos like Game Boy Advance games, Nintendo DS, that is through the Camtasia and the emulator itself. Okay guys, now it's finally time to show you how I record my emulator games such as Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, could be Super Nintendo, Nintendo, whenever I get around to those consoles. So if you just look on my computer screen right here, uh, all I do is I just go, after you install emulators, you get them all in one folder, you get the ROMs, all that kind of stuff. I usually go to, let's, anyone, it could be any game basically. Just pick a game, what game do I want to show? Um, I guess I could show Oracle Seasons. So click and drag that over to the Visual Boy Advance icon. Once you get this all figured out, get the settings you want. Usually I'll go and open up Camtasia here at the bottom. And then I'll pick, I'll, like, I'll put the Camtasia screen over the Game Boy screen just perfectly. And i basically be using a controller. Basically, I'll be using a controller like this. It plugs into the computers, well, the back of the iMac, and it's a USB controller. Or you could just use a keyboard. It's whatever works. I don't have this configured right now, so in order to configure a controller real quick, it's pretty easy. You go to configure. Let's say I want to go one down left. I said left. Right. A. And this game doesn't have any B buttons. I mean L or R, I mean. Select, start, start, and that's all we need. So, I always save save states, which is really important. So let's go ahead and load one. Okay, here's the one spot I was at. Let's go and load something a little after that. Alright, here we go. So, basically, I just record my gameplay screen, and I check the clock in the top right corner of my iMac to see how long I've been recording so I'll get about an estimate so I'm recording Fire Emblem videos or whatever and that's pretty important depending on what game I'm playing this one's Zelda Oracle Seasons it's pretty cool and it's basically the same editing process I go through once I am done uh, recording I can't really show you how I edit anything on the Camtasia, Camtasia Studio because I have to close it down and open up the editor but it's pretty much the same thing as I, were, I record everything else. Make sure you get the emulator set up. Once you get the emulator set up, then make sure you have all your keys configured. Use Camtasia to record it. I never have any sort of audio lag with it, no frame rate issues. Once you do that, put it in a video editor, publish it, and then you're good to go. And that's basically it for an emulator video. It's, it's not too hard, but it's also... As much as I love that music. It's not too hard, but it's also not the easiest thing to do. You have to, I, have, I recommend a computer with like 2 gigabytes of RAM or more. I mean, one may be able to run an emulator, just depends on the computer. I mean, if you have three or more, you're, you're good to go. This iMac has eight, and on the Windows, I put it on three, which it might be able to go to four. I haven't look, looked into the settings too much, but it's not too hard overall. But once you get the hang of it, it's, it's pretty easy. And... There's nothing else to really show you how I make my Let's Play videos, but if you have any sort of questions or anything else I do, just let me know and I'll answer it as best as I can. And that wraps up my tutorial of how I make my Let's Play videos. They're not that hard, but, you know, just take a lot of configuring. Anyways, that's all I have to say, and have a good day. Thank you for watching.